It's the Crows' first match in Melbourne. Essendon versus Adelaide, live from Windy Hill. Here they come, running on to Windy Hill this afternoon for the first time. It's a difficult task for Adelaide, as I'm sure Peter McKenna and Don Scott would agree. Well, the Crows have been very impressive, Pete, so far. All right, Bill, it was a top win last Sunday against the Swan. I think it was just excitement, really. I was a young bloke uh, from the country, had been at South for a couple of years, and, uh, yeah, couldn't believe that I got invited out. And then to make the squad and to eventually get a game, was, yeah, it was quite remarkable, really. Chiefs caught with the ball and the Crows will get away through Denny Hughes. And he's looking for Bickley and Bickley's got it. Not the way he moves, young Bickley. Bickley to the half forward line. Quiet and Hodges missing, there's not too much up forward. Matt leads in the race for it. Backup support from Contadine. Jarman comes out with it. Not his feet, it's that. Free King. I didn't have a contract during the week, so Neil Curley called me into his office and, and put a contract in front of me and said, you're playing. That was even before selection, so it just shows Kills had a fair bit to do with what was going on. And, um, yeah, just signing that, ringing mum and dad, you know, telling them, and that we're all very excited. But then it was actually the, the Crows' first game in Melbourne. Could it be a sheedy tactic? I'm like just a little paranoid, but there's not one flag or wind sock in sight. Yes, you did right, Gerard. There is not one around the ground at all, not even on top of the scoreboard. That's where the windsock used to be, but there's the Adelaide Crows. But There's a fair bit of um, controversy around it. We got there, the windsock was tied down, we didn't have a change rooms to change in, and uh, yeah, it was quite remarkable. But the game itself, um, I started on the bench, uh, Chris McDermott was the skipper, he wasn't going that well, the coach wanted to talk to him, so I replaced him uh, pretty early in the game, and yeah, stayed on for the rest of the match. McDermott, that looks pretty good. The Crows fans behind the goal like it. It's full points. Well, there's not much reaction. I think Chris McDermott um, was the one, sort of, across the whole uh, pre-season when the club was formed, he was the one that was really the, uh, the glue that held everyone together and, you know, he was just such a huge influence on me, you know, him being a bit older and, you know, so I always tried to emulate him in, in you know, trying to make people feel welcome. He certainly, um, for someone who had some doubts whether they were good enough and whether they belonged, he certainly uh, made me feel like I was a valued member of the team, so I sort of never forgot that. Uh, I wasn't expecting really to play any games in the first year, then to get in and then to stay in there for the whole year. It was, um, it was just a year of first, you know, like playing all the big teams in Melbourne against players that you've sort of grown up idolising and, and playing at all the suburban grounds, you know, Victoria Park and Moorabbin and yeah, certainly yeah, not great experiences and, and we copped some really big hidings, but when you look back and you think of what happens now, and there's really only you know two or three grounds you play on in Melbourne. It was uh, I'm so glad I got to experience playing at those suburban grounds. I was really just battling to try and establish myself in the team, and uh, hadn't really even thought about leadership and. The other thing as well, like we were we were still a fledgling club, and you know we didn't know how long it was going to take to become, uh, you know, a, a real strong competitor. And in actual fact, we got there reasonably quickly. And in '93, we had an unbelievable year and and made it to a prelim and and maybe a bit earlier than what we thought. But then we had a couple of years in the wilderness. So when Blighty arrived, it was um, there was still a lot of uncertainty, and you know we'd missed the finals for a number of years in a row. So. Look, I guess, you know, when things click and go right, um, you know, there's no ceiling on it, and that's certainly what happened for us, particularly later in the back half of 97. Oh,